just wanted to tell everyone that I'm extremely excited about today's webinar. It's going to cover financial reporting and consolidation for smaller businesses and up down to all the way to medium sized businesses as well. And really focusing on the fact of how we can actually bring data in to a consolidated environment and give the reporting that a lot of businesses need, not just large enterprises, but also smaller businesses that have the same type of pain points that everyone has in the world. So thank you so much for joining me today. Just as a quick agenda, I want to cover a few things today. Financial challenges within small businesses. Obviously, there's a lot of different things that happen across organizations worldwide. And I want to be able to cover some of the key challenges that we see and our clients talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. And a lot of that probably could also relate back to what you're doing and what type of pain points that you have on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Then we'll go into how do you actually take those challenges and streamline the more financial reporting and consolidation to give you a cohesive look at what your business is doing and have those impactful insights to make those strategic business decisions. Then we're going to talk about integration, and that's a really big topic today because at the end of the day, when we're bringing data in, we have to integrate to multiple source systems. And that is one of the challenges that, that companies face all across the world is just being able to have a central location of all of their data and be able to accurately report off of that information and have confidence in their decision making based off of that, of that data. Then we'll go into visualization to action. This is a very key concept that we try to push across all of our clients. It's one thing to provide you with visualizations. Yes, that is one key element, but it's also to be able to educate how do you actually use these visuals to drive action within the business. Being able to look at a report that shows you who your customers or what your customers are buying, the next kind of logical piece to take that to action is to be able to market to clients that aren't purchasing those, those particular um, solutions that your business offers. And being able to have that analytical component related to that and the data to back it up. After we go through some of those challenges, how do we mitigate those challenges and visualization to action, we're going to go into a live demo of actually seeing these visualizations come to place. And I will I'll show you how a lot of our clients will actually take those visualizations and turn them into action, which is, again, a very common theme that you'll see throughout today's presentation. So without further ado, just a brief introduction of myself. So my name is Mike Zach. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Actaris. I've been in the FinTech space for a long time now. I actually started my career with a treasury management software uh, out, outside of Chicago, and then moved to another treasury management software company that was primarily focused on private equity and hedge funds. So I have a really good understanding of what are the common challenges that most departments, not even just finance, most departments have within the organization and also some of the key reporting elements that are needed to make those strategic business decisions that I talked about earlier. Just a, a fun fact about me, I love traveling. I've been to about 44 countries, actually I was in Philippines this year and Japan this year, uh, but my favorite place that I've ever been so far has been Cambodia. So if you ever have a chance to go to Cambodia or even Vietnam, which is really close there, that's a beautiful place, uh, really wonderful people, um, and just a great experience that I think you will have. Before we actually get into today's presentation, just wanna start off with a polling question. How long would it take you or your organization to determine the, your most profitable day of the week, last year's revenue, and how it compares to previous year revenue. So how long would it take to, to address those three questions in today's environment? So I'll give, a, give everyone a, a few moments here to answer uh, the poll question, and then we'll go ahead and talk about some of the results that we get from the broader group. Again, this is more about today. You have your, your normal infrastructure. Maybe it's in Excel, maybe it's in a system, but if you were asked these three questions by someone within the organization, how long would it take you to get the answer to them? Is it less than five minutes, between five and 15 minutes, between 15 and 30 minutes, or more than 30 minutes? Because this is going to be a main driver of the conversation we're going to talk about today, because most of the clients that come to Actaris, it takes them more than 30 minutes just to come up with the answers to these three questions, which is, a, which is a lot of time. And a lot of these questions get asked commonly. So we wanna be able to address that. 
So we'll give this a few more seconds for the, the team to answer. Okay, so the results are in. It looks like even across the board, 33% for um, between five and 15 minutes, 33% 15 to 30 minutes, and then 33% 30 minutes or more. Uh, so great kind of audience. It looks like some people have some, maybe some automation already in place to get this information or, uh, and then others maybe don't have that type of automation, but are looking for that automation. So it's going to take uh, with this information, we're going to be able to kind of see uh, a lot more benefits that the Actera solution, but also just reporting can do for the organization. So thank you so much for volunteering to answer that question. We're gonna have one more polling question a little bit later today, but first we're gonna talk about some of the financial challenges that small businesses have. When we talk about accurate reporting, it's it's an important element and it's it's often looked past. We, we assume that the reporting that we look at on a day-to-day -day basis is, is accurate and that we're making the right decisions based on data that has been pulled together. But in a traditional way, when we're dealing with Excel as the most common tool that we see, at least in our field, there's a lot of manual work that goes into populating an Excel template. And whenever there's manual work that's involved, then you have errors that potentially creep up, which is, you know, when you have errors in, in a spreadsheet, as all of us probably know, it could lead to a lot of other errors that ultimately lead to inaccurate data. So when you're seeing a specific data point, you don't necessarily have the trust that that actually is the correct data point because you have to go back and you have to figure out and map how it was actually constructed and where those errors or inconsistencies potentially could be. We have a lot of delays. So with that poll question, it's important. So a lot of, so 33% of the participants today claim that it takes them 30 minutes or more to actually produce those three questions. And that's because there's a lot of data that's being transferred across the organization just to get to those three questions or answers to those three questions. And there's a lot of copying and pasting information back into Excel, which is very time consuming, which leads to poor data and ultimately poor decision making when you can't, when you don't have the confidence in the information that you're looking at. When you start to add more complexity on top of that, and as your business grows, you start to get into this whole consolidation process where you have multiple entities that now are reporting information. And that problem that I spoke about in the earlier slide starts to compound. Do you have data that's in disparate systems? You may have an HR system, a sales system, a financial system or an accounting system. And since we've purchased each of these independently, they don't necessarily talk to one another. This is the reason why we export a lot of that information out and put it into Excel just to make sense of it and connect those three different worlds together, which is a manual process and very time consuming. Uh, I was just actually talking to someone earlier today and they were saying that it takes them about an hour long every single day just to compile the information into one spreadsheet and then from there, they can start to analyze it. And if there's any issues, then they have to uncover what those issues are before they can actually report that data up the chain. So extremely time consuming just to get the information that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. Inconsistent reports across departments. So not only are we compiling all this data in a spreadsheet, when we start to share this with multiple organizations or departments within the organization, what's gonna end up happening is that that error or those um, that spreadsheet that we produce that has potential errors in it starts to compound even more, where you have other people now within the organization that are making bad decisions based off of bad data. You also don't have unique business logic that can be applied in a manual environment. So when we think about consolidation, you're gonna have intercompany rules, you're gonna have consol consolidation rules or elimination rules. And a lot of that is again, manual in nature when we're actually copying and pasting this from the source system. And solutions are often limited to one company, where when we think about consolidation, you need to have all of your companies in one place. I'll give you an example. Zero, which is a great accounting system, and we can pick on any other accounting system, QuickBooks, NetSuite, Business Central. Um, when we think about Zero in particular, Zero works based off of companies. 
and you have three, four, 10, 15 different companies, but they're all siloed even though they're in one platform. So to get a consolidated view, you have to download a PL or a balance sheet for one company, then go to the next company, do the same thing. And if you have 15 different companies, you're doing it 15 individual times, which goes back to the whole concept of it being very time consuming just to have that consolidated view. But as we all know, that's one of the most important things that we need to make business decisions because we're not doing it in silos. We're not doing, we're not making a business decision based on one individual company. Maybe in some cases we are, but holistically we want to be able to see how the overall business is doing and then make the right decision across all departments that are associated with that organization. And then last but not least, when we think about just data consolidation, it's also about poor visuals. When we create information into Excel, it's a lot of data. It's just a data dump of information. Now it's very, it's highly important for certain questions that you need to answer. But when we think about visuals, it doesn't really, Excel doesn't tell a story unless you create pie charts or bar charts or uh, waterfall charts. So being able to throw visuals on top of that allow us to actually see patterns in the data versus just looking at numbers on a screen. So it can be very complex and difficult to understand if you don't have those visuals that tell a story. And that's really what we're trying to get to is when I first come in the office, I want to be able to look at a dashboard of some kind in Excel or in Power BI or any other business intelligence tool just to see where we're at currently and what's the future trend and what's also the past trend that that has taken. Traditional reporting does lack flexibility and in, in being able to interact. Obviously, Excel is the number one choice that most financial professionals will lean towards, uh, but it does have its own issues in some cases. It's you know, the data is being stored in that Excel template. Uh, if you have a lot of data that's stored in that Excel template, it could take a long time to load or in some cases crash on us, uh, but it does provide us flexibility, which is the main reason why we start to use that. Um, but again, when we think about other tools that are on the market today, you're kind of limited to what they have created versus what we've come from, which is Excel and unlimited flexibility. We're used to that and we don't get that traditionally with a lot of systems that are out there today. Again, this thinking about going back to the accounting system that you're currently using right going and saying you know if you want to customize anything that you want within that platform it sometimes it can be pretty hard yes you can slice and dice five different parameters but if you want to move things around or change things or create your own type of graphs traditionally it's kind of hard to do that because this, those systems are not designed for reporting they're designed for workflow and to manage that information in one place for you what poor what data uh, data consolidation as well as poor visuals uh, or lack of data consolidation and poor visuals, what that leads to ultimately is misinformed decision making. When you see all this data, you're kind of anticipating what you think is going to happen based on the information that's in front of you in, in hopes that you can actually, that the data is correct and you're relying on the data being correct on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if any of you have come across a, a time where when you look at a data point and it doesn't look correct, you have to go back and you have to figure out why wasn't it correct. And that, not having that confidence starts to erode over a period of time, especially if it happens over and over and over again. When you don't have a lot of, when you have a lot of poor visuals, it also leads to this concept of um, limited analytical capabilities. We talked about trends. Trends is a great way to see where the business was and where it's going. And if we don't have that historical information, at our fingertips in a more visual way, it's very hard to see that. I don't know if any of you have, have tested uh, looking at a spreadsheet versus looking at a graph and being able to determine the, the differences between the two, but for me personally, looking at a graph is a lot easier than looking at numbers. Numbers are always important to be able to drill down into and get access to, but what I would love to see when I first walk in is an actual visualization of where the business is and then I can see different trends and you can start to identify different patterns versus just looking at a bunch of numbers on a screen, which again is important, but not for decision making ultimately. When we when we think about reporting, there's also the that's all about past information, either past or present information, which is which is where we need to know today what we need to know today. But to prepare for the future, we need to plan. 
And when we have inaccurate data historically, it's going to allow to inaccurate planning in the future. So we're not going to be able to be predict the future based off of inaccuracies in the past. So anticipating challenges and growth opportunities are, are typically some of the things that we look for in any type of planning solution. So there's two ways to think about financial reporting and planning. There's the element of the reporting side and consolidation of getting the information in quickly to visualize it and make those business decisions, but it's also then leveraging that information so that way you can plan for the future. Legacy systems typically are in silos, which don't give you the, the cohesive view of the business. So when we think about zero or any accounting system that's out there, right, that's only financial data. That's a part of the overall business. Then we go into our CRM tool. Then we go into an inventory tool. Then we go into an HR tool. Once again, those are independent from one another. But if you bring all the data together, it does tell a story. And this is very important for planning, which we're going to touch a little bit on today. It's not the core topic. But when we think about planning, and if we look at HR as an example, well, if we hire, if we're going to hire in the future three new people, how is that going to impact the overall business? We know how it's going to impact HR, they're going to need to hire five people. It's going to, they're going to have to figure out what jobs are, what the job openings are, all of that. But if that person is actually hired, then the salary associated with it and the benefits associated with it need to cascade down into the finance world so they can impact their PL and they can then budget what's going to happen over the next year. So, in a very simple use case, you can see the impact that one system has on another. Now, if they're both segregated, which most of them are, it's very hard to determine what that is without going to that department, asking what they believe is going to happen in the next few months, weeks, you know, few weeks, months, years. But being able to have it all in one place gives everyone the ability to see exactly what's happening within the business, given their, their respectable rights. Now, those are a lot of the challenges that businesses have, poor visibility into their data in, in some cases, these siloed systems that they're working with, copying and pasting information into Excel, not having, having an overall consolidated report at, at their fingertips. Right? These are all some of the challenges that we see customers that come to us with. So how do we, how do we actually mitigate those challenges? How do we help organizations streamline their financial reporting and consolidation? Well, we first start by consolidating the data. We have to integrate with all these different source systems and centralize it in a single source of truth. HR systems, CRM solutions, finance systems, among others that I'm sure that you're working with. When we think about manual consolidation it, what it, and what it leads to is dysfunctional processes, inefficiencies or inaccuracies in data. So we've kind of already harped on that in the earlier slides. But what consolidation in a seamless way brings to the organization is quicker insights. So now that your data is in one place and you have the trust in that data, now you can make quicker decisions based off of that. You have accurate reporting and that trust, which is extremely important, and then more of a unified view. If you can see everything across the organization, then you can make those decisions in a more accurate way. Automated reporting, this is a huge concept. Again, a lot of our clients that come to us today, they're working with Excel spreadsheets. Now, Excel is a great tool, and I'm not saying to get rid of Excel. I'm actually saying to enhance Excel using tools that are, that are out there like Acteris. But when we think about Excel, again, very time consuming, putting this information together, it yields summary level uh, reporting information because it's very hard to copy and taste every single transaction that happens within the business. So you're always looking at, or traditionally always looking at summary data. Uh, it does hinder decision making because again, it, it depends on what data you're bringing into that Excel template and what time you have. And we want people more focused on value added tasks versus this manual processes. And it's only the data that you have integrated with that Excel template. It's not anything outside of that. When you create more of that automated reporting and have systems like Ecteris integrate with these systems seamlessly, you get instant visuals. Now these visuals can be within Excel or Power BI. The biggest difference here is that you have a structured database behind the scenes. So right now, a lot of our clients are using Excel and all the data is stored in that Excel template or that workbook. We're introducing the concept of actually, actually putting a structured database behind that Excel template, still using all of the different skills that you have amassed over the over the years within Excel, 
but it's a structured database behind the scenes that you're referencing. That means when you close the Excel without saving, it doesn't matter. You can just pull that Excel right back up, connect back to the database, and now the information is there. Perfectly formatted visuals. This may seem very you know, min minimal, like does, does this really matter, you may be asking yourself. The answer is yes. If I were to show you a pie chart that isn't really formatted versus one that is formatted based on IBCS standards, you, there's, it's a very big difference. And it's not just about the visual. It's the story that the visual tells you. You know, making sure that you have the right chart for the data that it's displaying. You know, again, very big, very big piece of this. You get that holistic insight. So if we're having a system like Ecteris connect to all your different applications, you have that holistic uh, oversight of your data and knowing that it's in one place and it's secure. And then being able to distribute this information out to end users is also another important piece because as an organization, you want other people to help with your decision making. And if you can get the data to them quickly, they can also identify any, any information that they may know that's not inside of systems, more of that quantitative versus qualitative kind of concept. Now to get to this point, there are really three things that the Actera solution brings to the table. First is, once again, aggregation. I, I harp on this point because it's extremely important. This is the most time-consuming process if you're doing it manually. This is that copy and pasting from the source system into an Excel template. To, to mitigate that going forward, we build and have built multiple connectors to source systems. They're just API connections that we extract data out of that source system into our central database that I mentioned earlier. And that's across all of the different source systems that you may be working with today. That's only part of the problem though, right? Once you get all of the data in one place, you have an HR system, you have a sales system, let's say you have a finance system, all coming into one environment. Great, all the data is there, but it's not all connected, which leads to the second step, which is data modeling. When you bring all of this information in, it's like having three different languages in a database. You have sales language, you have a, a HR language, and you have finance language. But to normalize that data, you have to have some commonality. So we identify that commonality through our connectors and our data models by optimizing it for consumption. Once you bring that information in, you build the data model, you normalize the data across, oops, across all these different systems, then we present the data in familiar tools. And those familiar tools are Excel and Power BI. That gives you a cohesive solution. So when you first come in, you're still going into Excel, you're still going into Power BI, but all of the data has already been consolidated, it's already been mapped together, it's been presented in a visual way that has that is based on uh, certain standards in the industry. So you can instantly start making decisions first thing in the morning versus waiting for the data to come in or for someone to compile that data. So why is this important? This goes back to insights to impact, right? I wanna be able to look at the data and make an impact on the business. But how can I do that if the data is inaccurate and I don't, and, I, and ultimately the, there's only a piece of the data that I'm looking at. Impact is a very big term in the industry right now because a lot of people will just present you with data and say, here you go, here's the information. That's only part of the problem. It's how do I then use that? The question I like to throw out is, so what? So what, I have this data, now what do I do with this data? And I think that's a really big missing piece in the industry where that the companies don't actually train people on how to use this within the business to make an impact on the business. Because that's ultimately what we're trying to do. Getting data, putting data in one place, yes, that is a big problem that we're solving, but it's the next layer that goes on top of that, which is, okay, what do I do with this now? Do I email a customer because they haven't paid in 90 days? Well, okay, if that's the step that I need to take, make it easy for me to do that. And that's exactly what we're gonna be highlighting today is that last step or the last mile of, here's the visualizations, which is great, but what can I do with that data now? So, and, and then focusing on more value added tasks. It's not valuable to copy and paste data from Excel. None of us went to school to copy and paste data from Excel to, or from a source system to Excel. And none of us probably like doing that. We just have to because that's what we're given and, and what the tools that we have at, at the moment. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to shift people's mindsets to don't worry about that. Let Actaris handle all of that infrastructure for you. 
and focus on more of those value-added tasks to drive the business forward. Employee retention. I don't think this gets talked about a lot in the industry, but it is a very important piece. As we start to grow, as AI is really uh, taking off and, and making teams more productive, employee retention is a key component. It takes a lot to hire someone, train someone, and then six months later for them to leave, it's heartbreaking in some cases, especially if they're really, really good. And you spent all this effort going through and training them. And the reason why they left is because they don't want to be copying and pasting information from Excel. But that's not what they went to school for. And that's not what is available in the market. They want to expand their knowledge and learn how to create these visualizations and actually make an impact on the business. Not, okay, I'm just going to sit in a back room and start crunching numbers and put them all into Excel. So by creating an environment that allows them to see the data, have a really a sense of how the business operates, just increases that employee retention. And we see this time and time again with the clients that we work with, that they don't necessarily need to hire more people. They can retain the existing people that they have and make them more productive. Data confidence. This is a really another big point, right? Having trust in the data. This may seem very nonchalant, but at the end of the day, if you're looking at a specific data point, either in a, in a Excel template, in a bar chart, in a line chart, you want to have confidence that that's the right data. Because if you're going to make a decision based off of that information, you want to have the confidence that you have it. You don't want to be like, oh, I think this is what it's going to be, and then, and then something else happens later down the road. You want to have confidence that the data is accurate, that you trust the data, and that the decision you're making based off of the data is backed based on that confidence identifying patterns in in all of our lives we always look at past and and also uh to, to predict the future i mean i go back to the consumer world anytime i buy a product i go back to whoever bought the product before me that's past information based on reviews before i buy anything or make a decision to buy something i always go back and look at reviews the same thing kind of applies to a business where if you're looking at past trends history repeats itself in, in most cases if sales are going down, there's a reason why sales are going down. If sales are going up, there's a reason why sales are going up. We're either doing something really good or we're doing something really bad. That's where we can start using these value-added tasks to identify what those issues are or great things that are happening within the business are that we can, should continue to use and throw money behind because they're actually working. So identifying these different patterns in the data is important and that's when we want users to spend most of their time analyzing. And then with AI, you, you get to actually have the system do a lot of the heavy lifting to identify those patterns and provide insights. So those three questions that I asked earlier in, in a poll, in the poll, those three questions can actually be answered by AI. You don't even need to do anything. You click a button and AI can generate the results and let you know what your highest profitable day is, what your revenue last year is, how does it compare to this year? So you don't even need a visual to represent that. You need the data behind it that's in a structured environment to add, leverage AI. It's funny, I, I have a lot of conversations with, with businesses and they're all, the first thing that they ask me is, oh, we want to introduce AI. And then the second question, I, or the question I ask back to them is, well, where is your data? And as soon as they tell me that their data is in all these disparate systems, there's no way you can leverage AI. You have to have your information in one place for AI to work effectively. It can't, it's not smart enough yet to go to these different systems and figure out and piece it all together. That's where the data modeling still needs to take place. What it's good at doing is being able to look at the information in one place and ultimately track this and provide you further information and identify those patterns automatically. And last but not least, one of the things that we're, we're doing in any business is we're trying to stay ahead of our competition. If we don't know our own business and our competition knows their business, we're already a step behind. So being able to produce a report quickly, effectively about the health of the organization just gives gets you that closer to the competition. And if they're not doing it, then that means you're ahead of that competition and that you're gonna be making the right decisions. I was just talking to another company, a healthcare company actually, and they ended up having to downsize because they, they needed to shift their direction of where they were going with the business. And the reason they decided that is because they were actually looking at their competition and seeing where their competition were going. But if their competition is already there, then they're late. And you wanna be able to make sure that you're not late and that you have this information at your fingertips so you can be first in line and you can actually get the benefits out of that.
So we have a, a, another, the last polling question of the day. And this is really just to itemize out like what type of systems are you working with within your organization, specifically related to accounting systems. And this is going to play a big role in what we're going to talk about today in the live demonstration. I'm actually going to demonstrate a template that we created for QuickBooks specifically, but we do have them for HubSpot, NetSuite, Xero, uh, Business Central, Stripe, um, Deer, among others. It's all on our website, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But there's a lot of different systems out there. These are some of the ones that we have um, provided, at least for this poll question. So we'll give everyone a few minutes here to take a look at what type of um, systems that they're working with on the accounting side. And the reason why we also have these, um, because mo like NetSuite, Hubs uh, excuse me, NetSuite, QuickBooks, Zero, these typically are more structured systems where there's, yes, there's a little bit of configuration, but the process and the data model behind the scenes is pretty uh, static. So that allows us to integrate with these systems seamlessly and provide reporting, out of the box reporting within 10 minutes or less. When we think about other ERPs that are out there, SAP, Oracle, Workday, we can certainly connect to them, but that allows more flexibility, which means that it's typically more tailored to the business and how they're using that product before we can actually get it all into one place. So there's a little bit more of a configuration that is needed for those types of source systems, but ultimately, um, any of these that you're using on the on the screen right now, if you are, then we can instantly connect to those platforms and we have a, other, a library of others that we can connect to as well. All right, so it looks like the polling results are in. A majority of you are using something other than what's on this list. So that's great, great to know. Um, I will encourage you to go to our website. We have a, a long list of different inter, uh, integrations that we support outside of what we have included here. These are just some of the common ones that we see within small businesses, Zero and QuickBooks being the most common, QuickBooks mostly in the, in the United States, Zero being um, in more of the APAC region just because they're based in Australia. So great to know that a lot of you are using NetSuite, uh, some of you are using Zero, a little bit are using QuickBooks and most of you are have another system. But feel free to, to reach out to us if you are using another system, we do have solutions for those applications. These are just more pre-built out of the box because of the system that we're integrating with. So thank you again for answering that poll question. When we think about, you know, again, integrating to different systems, here's a few examples of what we've integrated. This goes back to sales, finance, operations, HR systems, uh, all of the above that we can connect to. In today's world, connecting to systems is relatively easy to do with the tools that are available to us. Specifically, Microsoft makes it very easy with Fabric, which we have a webinar um, in a couple of weeks that will cover how we actually go through that process of connecting to, I think, about 400 different data sources, 400 plus different data sources that uh, Microsoft offers out of the box, plus other tools that they have to actually bring data in. So Microsoft and other players in the market are really making it easy for people to consolidate data because they understand the value that it does bring any organization. So when we think about visualization to action, so this is, this is the impact component that I was talking about earlier. Why is this important? Being able to act on data that is presented to the user, right? Again, it's not as important to just visualize it. It's important to understand what you're reviewing on that visualization and then ultimately lead to some sort of action behind that. You have more impactful decisions based on data. In any type of business decision, if you're able to back it up with additional data, it's, it's gonna resonate a lot more than I'm sticking my finger in the air and gonna take a guess at this. Data, there is just so much data. There was a, an analogy that I heard yesterday or a couple of days ago um, that I'm more likely to choke on food than to starve. And when you think about that and you relate that back to data, that's exactly what the world we live in today. There's just so much data out there that our business produces and we're, we're, we are more inclined to choke on the data than to starve from getting data. Data is everywhere. But making sense of that data so it's actually impactful is extremely important. But not only taking that data and putting it in one place, but then aligning it to some of the business challenges that you are starting to see. So this goes back to that qualitative versus quantitative analytics. 
a data and, and, and automation and AI is only going to get you so far. Humans still run the business. And there's a lot of information that are in, the, in humans that we still be, need to leverage to make decisions within the organization, especially when we have complex problems. It's not simple to saying, oh, our revenue is going down. It's because of X. That's most likely not the case. It's probably a complex set of issues that are taking place that you need to uncover to make sure that you actually mitigate that risk going forward. Boost engagement. This is a really big thing that we hear from our clients when we do customer testimonials is the fact that just by giving this information in a, in a free way and in, in using these, these tools like Power BI and Excel to present it, it's, it's boosting people's engagement. They can actually start to see the data, make sense of the data and actually go forward and make suggestions on how they can use this. So you're actually boosting uh, engagement and capturing people's attention internally, not only just with upper management, but anyone else in the organization, when they see the data, they can, they can speak about what their experience is in the field, and that brings that qualitative, quantitative type of world together. Inspire individuals to take action. By putting in front of them visualizations, instead of them going through and manually putting all this together and being, being exhausted to the point where they don't even uh, have the time to review the data and make sense of it, it, it gives them, it inspires individuals that they can actually look at this information and have an impact on the business. This goes back to that employee retention example I was giving you earlier. People want to make an impact, not only on just society, they wanna make an impact within the business giving them the tools and allowing them to take action on data and feel confident that they're, they're taking the right action is important. This also leads to the, the point that you don't have to babysit everyone, right? If you're giving them the information and they're, they know the business, they can make these decisions, which ultimately makes your life a lot easier as well. The last thing, which is, uh, at least for me, resonates the most is humans tend to remember visuals more than text and speech. I'm sure 90% of the, the conversation we're having together today, and I know it's one way for me, is a lot of the, what I'm saying is resonating, but it's not going to stick as much as the demo that I provide you, which is a more visual format. Like, yes, I would like that. Everything else, yes, you can nod your head, say, this, these are some of the pain points that we have, or um, you know, these are some of the things that we need to work on as an organization. But as humans, we tend to memorize and remember visuals versus text and speech. Now, introducing a concept or a solution that Actaris has that helps with all of this, helps with data aggregation, consolidation, reporting, impactful metrics that you can track and use internally. But Actaris or any system really can only get you so far. It's really up to the business to own that data, own the visualization, and educate people on how to use that. That is something that we traditionally help with as we're going through training, but at the end of the day, we're never gonna know the business as well as you. We can help you up to a certain point, but adopting this kind of methodology is extremely important. And we're all, again, we're all humans. Nobody likes change, but sometimes change is helpful and will save us more time in the long run by putting a little bit of emphasis in, in the short run. So we have a challenge, being able to make sense of your data in 15 minutes or less, providing, you know, being able to let us know what your system systems are, providing us a set of your data, and being able to quickly analyze that and provide those visualizations. So there's really a five-step process to get to this point. First off, identify those source systems and connect to those source systems. That's the whole process of aggregating the data. I also encourage you to start small. No, I don't, I don't know if any of you have worked on big implementations before, but traditionally when you have this big bang approach and you have a six month, so it takes six months to roll something out, you're not getting any value with that, right? You're, you may in six months get a lot of value out of it, but with systems today and, and how quickly you can design a, a Excel report or a Power BI report, you want to be able to provide insights. So what we encourage is, you know, let's start with a source system. Let's get all the data out. Let's build a PL. Let's build a balance sheet. Let's build a, a cash flow statement. Let's get you something that you don't have today that could answer those three questions in the poll earlier quickly. Or any other question that you get asked frequently that you can't answer within five or five minutes or less. 
So connecting to a source system, part number one. Part number two is understanding the business logic because everyone likes to look at information differently. As much as people can say that we have a canned solution and everything works for every client, it is not true because every business is different, every industry is different, every KPI is different. So we wanna be able to get the data in and understand your business a little bit more so we can help you with that unique business logic that you may have or the, or the business model that you may have, which then leads to data modeling. No matter what, if you're trying to build structure, you have to build a data model. I kind of think about it, if you're trying to build a house, you can't just, ran I mean, you could, but you can't just randomly build a house. It's better, and it's gonna be a longer standing home if you have your blueprints. And that's really what the data model is. It's a blueprint of your, of your organization mapping out how everything gets connected and build that data model for, for enterprise consumption so people can then make sense of the information and it's all connected at one. Once we actually connect your data source, build in business logic like consolidation rules, elimination intercompany rules, we then automatically build the data model and push this into Power BI. That's our business intelligence tool of choice. Uh, there's obviously other ones that we can work with as well, Tableau, Looker, uh, and, and more. Power BI is just extremely flexible and is a market leader. If you go to uh, Gartner's Magic Quadrant there, oh, sorry, I don't know what just happened there. Um, if you go to if you go to Gartner, you'll see um, there's a lot of um, a lot of different reports or different business intelligence tools that are on the market. But Power BI, which is a Microsoft product, is definitely um, outpacing everyone out there. And plus, now with their co-pilots and different integ AI integrations within those different systems, it's going to be wide. It's definitely widely adopted today. And I, I assume it's going to be a widely, more widely adopted in the future. So what we do is we bring all the data in, we build the data model, we push this into a Power BI template just to make sense of that. Again, it goes back to the, those visualizations. And then from there, we can create a more tailored experience for each of your different businesses. And the great news is Power BI and Excel are very similar to one another and, and how you create things. It is a little bit of a different language, but a lot of the skill sets you have with, with Excel migrate into Power BI and vice versa. Building things in a more tailored experience is definitely what Power BI is designed for. It's extremely flexible. When we think about Xero or MetSuite or SAP or Oracle, and you let's say that you go to them and say, listen, I don't really like the way that this screen looks, and I would like it changed. Well, one or two, one of two things is going to happen. First, they're going to say, no, we're not doing that because our client, all of our clients would then be affected. Or two, okay, we can consider that, but it's going to go into our development cycle, and it's going to be six months before you actually see something like that. right? With Power BI and Excel, if you want to modify something, you can do it within 10 minutes. So it's not like you have to actually adhere to what everyone else is doing. You actually can build a more tailored experience. I don't like to use the word customize because it has a negative connotation to it. Everyone that's gone through implementation, they say, oh, we're gonna customize this for you. It ends up being a long period of time before you actually get the value out of that. I like to use the word tailored because it literally is tailoring this to your business in a quick, effective, and fast way. What that, 15 minutes or less, what that brings you by connecting your data sources, building in business logic, creating a data model, pushing this to Power BI, what that then gives you is that holistic view of that source system and allows you to have better a better handle on your financial information. So if you're using any of the source systems that we're connecting to uh, on our website, which you can uh, go to actaris.com, please feel free to reach out to us. Happy to engage with you a little bit more on what this looks like. Now, before we get into a live demonstration and being able to see where how this all comes together, I want to talk a little bit of a, a couple of different use cases. I think, again, as, as individuals, we like to hear how other people have leveraged this technology and what were they able to do with it. Uh, I'm going to breeze through these quickly because I definitely want to get into a live demonstration. Uh, we had a CPA firm that we were working with um, uh, in, in a couple, probably about six, six months ago or so. And they wanted to be able to provide their clients with exactly what we talked about today. So instead of their clients doing this individually, their CPA firm, which was managing their books, were offering this as a service. So they were able to implement this across all of their clients, which then provided their clients, right? Because the CPA firm is, is an Actaris client. 
they were able to provide their clients with metrics, key metrics, KPIs. They were unable to unlock, uh, um, the CPA firm was able to unlock a revenue stream because now this is a competitive advantage for them to be able to offer this to their clients. So potentially maybe the CPA firm is, is running your books or a fractional CFO is running your books. These individuals could also work with Actaris to implement the technology instead of it being done within the organization. We had a retailer uh, recently that in, in implemented this. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to be able to identify customer behavior. And this goes back to visualization to impact. And you'll actually see this live today. What they wanted to track was what customers were buying and what products were they buying. And if they were buying certain products together, which customers did not bundle products, which allowed them to then take action. So if a customer bought two products and another customer only bought one product, but it's very common to see that they're buying both products at the same time, but all the customers that did not, they can reach out to them, send out a marketing campaign like, hey, did, you know, you should buy, be buying peanut butter and jelly if you want to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, that kind of concept. So they were able to implement all of that data. Uh, and it was a Shopify uh, instance that we were able to bring that information in from, identify all their buying behaviors across the, their, their different customers and allow them to provide additional insights and also impacted their marketing team because now they can go to their marketing team and say hey we have 50 percent of our clients that are buying these two different products maybe we should bundle them together so we can increase that and get more money or more revenue in the door so it's all about taking these visualizations taking this data and actually making an impact on the business by making those decisions and then the last is uh, we had a, another retailer that came to us and they wanted to uh, for us to connect to their pos system and link this to their finance application because their finance system didn't have the ability to forecast incoming revenue and how it accounted for funds that were coming in and they needed to actually improve this so we were able to connect to their PO system increase visibility uh, improved allocation of what that looks like internally for the accounting system and just provided up-to-date financials in real time versus waiting for this to get imported into their accounting system pull from the accounting system they were able to get real-time insights into their business as things were closing uh, within the field so now i'm going to go through just a live demonstration i know we only have about eight minutes left but i want to give you a little bit of sense of kind of how does all this come together right so yes all of this was words uh, and powerpoints which not a lot of us like powerpoint but unfortunately it is really the only way that we can communicate uh, over kind of a webinar like this to, to talk about some of the pain points that people have, but actually seeing this in action. What, what does this mean for me? This goes back to my question. So what? So what if we have this challenge? So what if we have all this data and we get it all in one place? What can I now do with it? This is the impact components, visualization to impact. So we have a template that we created and there's a variety of different pages. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to cover all these pages, but please feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to go through a, a more uh, detailed demonstration of the technology. Uh, but we can see we have sales by customer, cross-selling anal analytics, AP aging, new customers versus returning customers. So let's go through this one by one. The first page is going to be a really more about sales by customer. Where are we selling the most? And how are we comparing to last year trends? So imagine being able to have this in first thing in the morning without having to do any type of data aggregation. We can see what our total sales are. What was last month? What was last year? How are we comparing based on what our total sales are year to date? How many units have we sold in total? If that's an important metric. How many customers do we have? What was our customers last month growth? What was it uh, what was last year growth? What is our top customer uh, associated with the data? Where are customers buying? Are they buying in a specific region? Being able to then zoom in and oops, drill down into this data is extremely important. Seeing trends over a period of time with hover over capabilities. So you can track what are our total sales? What are the, the sales last year, last month? What's the percentage growth? All of that at your fingertips. Being able to drill down, as you can see, as I click through, it's actually refiltering the information. So in April, we, have, we had 16 customers that were on board. Well, where were those 16 customers located? It looks like Wyoming and Delaware or Maryland. So we can go ahead and maybe we need to do some marketing pushes more into those regions. So sales by asset class or by product class. Uh, what were our sales last year versus this year? Being able to look at total sales in, in more of a grid structure. So it's all about visualizations 
But more importantly, this goes back to impact. So great, I know where my sales are, I know who's buying our solution, but what, what can I do with this? And this is a really, really cool visualization where we're able to track uh, in, you know, what our different products units are, and this is all anonymized data, but you can have your product names and all of this can be configured. You can have your look and feel, your color scheme on it. But for this product and for this product, so product 66 and product 75, 24% of individuals bought both of these products at the same time. And we can see that a total of 85 customers that bought either individually these products or collectively, and that's where this 20 number comes from, because there's 20 customers that actually bought both products together. But over here, this is how many customers did not buy these two products together. And what this gives us the ability to do is we can actually look at this information and take action. Do we want to send these customers an email and say, hey, you bought product 66, but you didn't, but most of our customers buy product 66 and product 75. Would you be interested? Increasing revenue. So again, this goes back to visualization to impact and seeing the impact that this has on the business and being able to make these decisions quickly. Being able to also analyze new customers versus returning customers. So are new customers turning into returning customers and what's the ratio associated with that? Are we doing a good job taking new customers and making sure that they're returning customers? Or are we doing a poor job doing that? How does that compare to last year versus this year? This goes back to that analogy that I was coming, uh, that I, I spoke about earlier, you know, poking on data versus starving with data. All of it is available. And this is available in your, your ERP system, your CRM solution, your um, HR system. All of this data is available, but how do we make sense of it? And that's really another service that Actaris offers. It's not only providing you a product to make this easy to bring all this information into one place, but it's then articulating how do you use this across your business and obviously working with you in doing so. So we have 16 recurring customers. We have returning sales. Has that increased from last year? Uh, obviously, this is these are all good metrics. How does this look over time? So this is about identifying their various patterns with tooltip capabilities built into these reports. You have all these slicers along the left-hand side. Maybe you only want to look at this by a single organization or multiple organizations over a period of time for a certain customer. So you can drill down all the way to the lowest level but then roll up to the highest level within the same platform. And none of the hard work that goes into building these templates are being done. That's the whole copy and pasting from source systems into Excel. That all gets eliminated. First thing you, in the morning, you can see this information in real time. Income statements, balance sheets, year-to-date statements, all of this can now be done. And this is, by the way, Power BI. Uh, this can also be done in Excel, just giving you that information in real time and being able to see what those trends are, last year trends, this year's trends, full drill down capabilities. So if you wanna look at what your overall production sales are, you can drill down, you can look at what your operating expenses are. Once again, looking at this over the organization over different periods of time, you have these different buttons that you can click on. So if you're interested in looking at the detail versus what was my quarter over quarter, which again, looks like a, a spreadsheet, but is more interactive because you have all these different visualizations that support that data. Uh, again, full drill down capabilities. We have our income statement. Uh, this is looking at it more on a year-to-date basis. So what are our actuals? What's, what was last year? What's the variance associated with that? What's the Delta variance? What's the percent variance? Um, so you can click on that and drill into it and interact with each of these different charts. How does this relate to the balance sheet and, and, and information over a period of time? What's our assets? What's our liabilities? What's our different um, metrics or KPIs, quick ratio, debt to equity ratio? What does that look like? How does this relate back to our cash flow statements? HR aging reports. This is another um, component of visualization to action. Your, the system can tell you what your accounts receivable is by customer, by invoice. What's the amount owed? But then what's, the, so what? What do I do now? Well, we can actually email directly from the system and say, okay, for this individual person, we want to be able to email them and say, hey, you know, we have, you know, 32K invoice that's outstanding. It's been outstanding for the, you know, 30 plus days, um, you know. Please pay the invoice. And this can also be automated. So on a, on a nightly basis, it can go back and look at the data and say, okay, anyone that's 30 days uh, past due, send them this notification. Anyone that's 60 days past uh, due, send them this notification. So you can either do it manually or you can have this whole process automated. 
You can do, um, you can analyze what your accounts payable is. You can email the vendor directly from the system. And then last but not least, with the one minute remaining, uh, we can also look at um, planning. Now, that'll be another discussion uh, actually for a different day. I don't want to, I don't want to throw too much at you at once, but not only being able to see where you are, where you came from, but also plan for the future. It's another product that Ecteris offers is being able to do scenario analysis. What if this customer pays? Then how does this impact? Um, what if our revenue goes up by 10%? What's our bottom line look like? All of this can be built into one cohesive system. And just to let you know, uh, what I've been able to do is demo this entire product inside of PowerPoint. So this is a Power BI report. Um, this also works with Excel, but everything that I just showed you in that in that live demo was actually in a PowerPoint presentation. This just speaks to the great thing that Microsoft is doing for the for the for the world is integrating their technologies across all these different familiar tools: Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Outlook. Power BI all coming together and Actaris is really emphasizing that and being able to enhance those different tools to make your life really easy. So it looks like we have a few questions. Um, I wanna make sure that maybe we can get a few of them real quick uh, here. So what other systems can you connect to? There's a variety of them. There's about 400 plus systems that we can connect to. We only mentioned a few of them today just because of the topic of the of today's webinar but we have a lot of different systems that we can connect to and everything that i talked about holds true across all those different systems so there's a lot of other questions that came in i know that we're up at time and i want to be respectful of everyone's uh, day so i want to thank everyone for for joining me today and being able to review what actaris can do for your business and some of the different key elements that we bring to the table but if you have any questions we love talking data we love talking business challenges anything that you want to talk about please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to have those conversations also more than um, happy to provide you a more detailed presentation of the software but once again thank you so much for your time today and uh if we don't if we don't speak have a wonderful weekend